Um, John, I suppose like, rather than kind of shying away from it at the moment, you just obviously had some a tough period there with the, the Limerick Herders and incident in New York. Can I just, rather than kind of loading the question, can I just throw it out to you and just ask you your version of, of, of what's after happening recently? Well, without getting into any of the details, uh, you know, at the end of the day, these are all internal matters. Uh, we deal with them internally. Um, you know, the the players have, you know, worked extremely hard over the last number of years, and uh, the bottom line is, you know, they have my absolute uh, faith in them. And uh, I suppose for us, it's a matter that's been dealt with. It's done and dusted, and our focus is solely now on 2020 and moving forward. And, and within that, are there players that won't feature for Limerick anymore because of it? Um, at the moment, where we're at is we are back training with our, our panel for 2020. Uh, that panel hasn't been announced as yet. It will be in due course. Uh, we want to leave the, the guys who have come into the panel settle into the panel before we go announcing it and uh, you know, give them a chance to settle into the group which they are doing really, really well, and we're very excited by it. Um, so, you know, in due course, I think, uh, you know, when, when, when the panel is is, uh, is announced, you know, it, it'll be just reflective of the panel that's going forward for 2020, as opposed to anything to do with anything that happened in 2019. And, like, with the last number of months, since the end of the 2019 inter-county season, does it just show the, the dangers of, you know, like social media, of like technology on phones, all that kind of stuff? Like it must be very difficult from your point of view when you've no control over, you know, 35 people have phones. It must be very difficult from your point of view to, to you know, because you can't micromanage everybody. No, listen, uh, f- again, without getting into the details, yeah. uh, you know, I think all young people across the, the country, you know, have uh, a different lifestyle, you know, that's just the way it is. And, you know, uh, you know, we see it right in, in, in school. I see it every single day of the week. You know, I'm sure, you know, in the media world, you know, things go go awry as well. So I think ultimately the bottom line is uh, we we try to help our players as best we possibly can at all given times, and uh, you know m- maybe we'll do some more work on that going forward. But the bottom line is for us at the moment, it's about the hurling. It's about getting back to training, getting down to brass tacks moving on and getting prepared for the, the Allianz Hurling League which is going to start at the end of January participating in the Co-op Superstores League now in the next two weeks and uh, that's what we're looking forward to How energised are you for a fourth season in charge? Um, amazingly so to be honest yeah. um, you know defeat is an amazing thing you know and we were, we were so disappointed uh, you know having lost the semi-final um, we've had a good number of months now to reflect and you know, it was the end of our three-year term, so you know some big decisions had to be made. Um, but it, it was quite easy to be honest. You, you know, it didn't really enter my head at all that I might walk away and pass the bat on to somebody else. I really enjoy what I'm doing. I, I love working with this bunch of players. They're an incredible bunch. We've been together a number of years now. I have a fantastic backroom team that's after being re-energised by new people joining that as well. You know, Mikey Kiley's come in instead of Joe O'Connor. Joe did a phenomenal job for the last four years. You know, was absolutely key to our successes over the last number of years. And, uh, you know, we're so grateful for what he did for the group over that time. But, you know, his time now has come for him to focus on other areas. And Mikey Kiley has come in in his place. And Mikey's hugely qualified and very experienced, very energetic and a seriously hard worker. And I know he's going to bring a new dynamic to that aspect of what we're doing. And that's fantastic for our group. It really freshens it up. And uh, we also then have Donald Grady coming in instead of Brian Geary. Brian has had to step away. You know, he's got a young family. Again, he's put in huge commitment and, and dedication to to what we were doing over the last number of years. And it was so fantastic to have him in the dressing room, you know, a really experienced guy. And, you know, who better than Don Grady to, to come in in his place? You know, they're such experienced guys. You know, they've been there. They've done that. They, they've been on Limerick teams for over a decade. They were key players and key positions for a decade. And, you know, they know the ups and downs of what it's like to be a player, the challenges of trying to get through that, that winter slog and get yourself into a physical condition that you need to, to adapt to the, the requirements of the game now in terms of their diet and the gym work, uh, even just working around it in your day job or your studies. So they're great guys to have in the dressing room with us. So I'm really delighted to have Donald on board. And that's a massive plus for us going forward now. And if, again, it freshens things up, and that's really important. So, um, you know, listen, you can tell by listening to me. I'm, I'm excited by the season ahead, of course. There's going to be huge challenges along the way, massive challenges. We have a very difficult group in the Alliance Hurling League. 
Uh, you know, we have a number of young players coming into the panel who will, you know, we're going to try to assimilate into the group and try and give them some game time along the way and give them encouragement and develop them as quickly as we can. And, uh, you know, ultimately we have the most championship to, to look forward to in May, which, you know, we don't need to, to say how competitive that is. Like, it's, it's just after Richter scale, you know. Yeah, so yeah, it's going to be an absolute bear pit. Can I just try and analyse the three years that you've had with Limerick so far, in, in, in a hurling-only sense? 2017, it ended up in, um, in Nolan Park, if I remember correctly, three-point loss. And I, tell, and I remember after the game, you did the interview, and you were, you were going on about it like just being an unbelievable commitment from the boys and the effort they put in and all that kind of stuff. I actually thought that this Limerick team seems a million miles off. After watching that game, I thought a million miles off. I remember a few times, those lads could lift the ball off the ground they just pulled on it on the ground and I was like this team seems a small bit rattled and you changed like I'd say the personnel of the starting team fairly fairly heavily for 2018 and went on and won the All-Ireland brilliant brilliant year 2019 then brilliant right up until one game where you were got, when you got caught am I off the mark there with some of that? No listen the first year involved is always going to be a very very challenging year you know there's no getting away from that. You you ask any manager out there, and I don't think he's going to tell you that his first season was uh, a walk in the park or any management team. Yeah. And you know, because you're 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 begin you're you're starting out with a bunch of people that you, for the most part, haven't worked with before. You might know them at all, maybe let alone know them well. And you know, to build that kind of trust and that bond, that honesty, that understanding that you need to have, you know, when you're training three four times a week that you know it takes a year to build that up and for the players then to understand what we wanted to do with them uh, again that took time so you know do I look back on 2017 with disappointment um, I know that following the defeat to Kilkenny you know it's it was disappointing not to have won one of the two championship matches that we played beaten by Clare beaten by Kilkenny you know Munster and, and uh, All-Ireland Series but I think ultimately it was probably one of the best things that happened because it forced me to go back and it forced us as a management team to go right back and almost look at every single aspect of what we were doing and reimagine it, uh, you know, move the chairs around. You know, we didn't necessarily get, you know, let anybody go. We just moved people around into different roles because we got, we, I got to know everybody better and I knew where their strengths were and we just put their strengths to, to play in a, in a different area. And, and it had uh, it had immediate results, you know. Uh, Jimmy Quilty went with the with the goalkeepers that year, um, made a huge a huge impact there, you know. Sean O'Donnell came in to us, you know. There was a number of things happened, and I suppose ultimately we just had the hard work done in 2017, and we just needed to build on that uh, into 2018 and get a bit of confidence. And we got a, we actually got a, con a lot of confidence out of winning the Munster co uh, Superstores uh, League that year. Um, you know that was actually a, a bit of a stepping stone for us, and we went on into the, the Alliance Hurling League. And you know, Galway was the last game that year in 2018, and that allowed us to build towards that game, and we had a very good result above in Galway. So we were building confidence all the way through the season, and that kept on going. So we were we were improving exponentially, and yeah, I think your your analysis is fair. You know, we had a crap start, full stop. Uh, it was disappointing, but we learned from the mistakes, and I think that's the key to it. You know, we learned from the mistakes, and nobody panicked. Uh, the county board didn't panic. We didn't panic as a management team. We just stuck with the work and tried to make ourselves better. And you know, I think it's very similar to what we've done this year. You know, we've really gone back and stripped everything down and tried to reimagine, you know, every aspect of what we're doing and to improve everything that we're doing to see if we can find those levels of improvement that we're going to have to find if we're going to be competitive again in 2020. Thank you very much, Sean. Okay, you're welcome.